tales for dark nights. I Trained Crows to Bring Me Quarters Written by Leonard Petrossi Performed by Darren Marlar In college, I struggled to make ends meet. Most of my meals consisted nearly entirely of ramen noodles, garnished with a scrambled egg if my finances were stronger than usual, combined with the weekly splurge of a candy bar and soda each Friday. I worked a part-time job, but city rent was expensive. My classes were too tough to work more than 20 hours a week, and my parents had cut me off the year before. I was desperate, searching for any solution to bring in spare cash. And eventually I found one. It started as a joke among my friends. You know, Tony, said one of my roommates, as I poured a sad portion of noodles and half a spice pack into boiling water, even the pigeons in this city have better meals than you do. Meals? countered another one of my roommates, laughing. Hell, I bet they even have higher savings in their bank accounts than him. They laughed, and I ate my soup with a frown. But the idea stuck in my head, and that night I lay awake pondering. I'd often seen and picked up spare change on the sidewalk on the way to class. Nothing huge, a penny here, a dime there, maybe a quarter if I was lucky. But that was just a small portion of the city. From end to end, there was likely a small fortune hidden in the labyrinth, small rewards gleaming between cracks in the sidewalk and among the weeds. I didn't have time to retrieve them, but someone did. And that someone was test subject number one, Jeffrey the Crow. I'd made friends with Jeffrey the year before as he hobbled outside my apartment, pecking for food along the street. His beady eyes had squinted at me as I walked to class, following me as I ate a granola bar for breakfast, a splurge I could justify since I had worked an extra hour that week. <coughs> he cried, flapping his wings to flutter just past my head to land on the path in front of me. <coughs> Get, I said, clutching the granola bar tight and trying to sidestep him. His head tilted as he shuffled to stand directly in front of me, and he cawed again. <coughs> Expectant, waiting for me to pay the toll to use his path. So I left him a tiny piece of the bar and continued walking, and Jeffrey never forgot my gift. Every morning he waited for me outside, and we developed a relationship, a one-way tribute where I would share a crumb, a noodle, or some other minute piece of food on my way to class, and over time Jeffrey grew on me. Plus I realized just how smart a bird Jeffrey was. For instance, after a month, he learned I never left my apartment on weekends, so he stopped showing up outside my door on those days. And after two months, he started giving me trinkets in exchange for the bits of food. They were always small, a bit of string, a button, maybe a hair tie, but every so often, maybe once every two weeks, Jeffrey would bring me a coin. And now, with the fresh idea in my head, I had decided to capitalize on that. So, every morning Jeffrey brought me a coin, I gave him twice as much food and threw in one of his favorite treats, a raisin. For two months, Jeffrey failed to realize the trend, instead complaining on the days where he received his normal portions. Then, on the third month, something clicked, and Jeffrey only brought me coins from that day forward. At first, it was only amusing. Using my collegiate-level math skills, I calculated that Jeffrey was contributing about 60 cents per week on average to my net worth enough to bolster my diet with roughly a dozen bananas a month. Jeffrey had friends as well. 
fellow crows that had watched our interactions from the street but never approached. And in time, they too learned the pattern. By the time I graduated, a dozen crows were volunteering to bring presents to me each morning, which translated into a whopping seven bucks a week, enough to earn me a pound of bacon at the store. It became a running joke among my roommates, but still their eyes widened in awe as the queue of crows lined up each morning to deliver their gifts. I was sad to have ended my project once I graduated. It had been fun, but I'd landed a job at a plant six hours north of my college, and my new salary allowed for the acquisition of far more bacon than the crows did. So I packed my belongings into my car, feeding Jeffrey one last time as I prepared to move into my new apartment. He squinted his eyes and hopped closer as I started the engine, and I frowned, saddened by the thought of leaving him behind. So, on a whim, I took Jeffrey with me. He didn't seem to mind the ride, especially with my feeding him boiled peanuts I'd picked up from the gas station at our first stop, and he took a particular interest in the heating vents, fanning his wings out to catch the warmth. Civilization drifted away as we drove. The buildings and city streets I've grown accustomed to grew fewer and farther between. Before long, we were deep in the countryside, and where once there were sidewalks and traffic lights, there were now dirt roads and trees as far as I could see. And on arrival, I released Jeffrey from my car as I unpacked into my new place, watching him hop after me with each trip until he eventually grew bored and fluttered off. Each morning, he still met me, quickly growing used to my schedule and still bringing coins in exchange for breakfast. And the other crows in the area were observant to this outsider, watching our exchange, until, only ten days in, they too started finding coins for me. I smiled. It looked like I wasn't going to leave my project behind after all. But each day, less coins showed up at my doorstep. In the countryside, there were far fewer coins to be found, and Jeffrey started bringing other objects again, nudging them towards me for food, until six weeks in, there was no spare change left to be found. I felt bad for him, having drawn him away from his home, so I still paid him in full, two peanuts for each item. Though now there were twelve crows that showed up at my door, and the number was growing each day. And then, one day, Jeffrey brought me something different. Standing on the path to my car, he dropped something small and white onto the ground. Something hard that bounced, that made the hair on my neck raise as I recognized it. A tooth. More precisely, a molar. What looked to be a human molar. No, Jeffrey, I said, stepping backwards and pulling a quarter from my pocket. You have to bring me quarters, not, not this. <laughs> he said, insistent and flapping his wings. He tilted his head as I walked to my car, picking the molar back up and landing on the hood. With a soft tink, he dropped it on the metal, scratching at it, his eyes narrowed. Swallowing, I reached forward and grabbed it through my mittens, then handed him a peanut out of guilt. I suppose I should have expected him to bring something like this every once in a while, and I put the thought into the back of my head but the other crows had been watching the transaction, and by the end of the week their numbers had reached two dozen. Every morning they flocked to me as I waded through them, cawing and flapping, each searching for a reward, and each with something new in their beaks. They dropped it to the ground as I bit my lip, watching the small white objects come to rest on the concrete. Teeth, twenty-four of them, one for each crow, and every day they brought more. Even after I stopped rewarding them, they continued to show up on my doorstep, dropping the teeth in a mound 
their eyes angry as I refused to give them payment, but instead swept the teeth under my porch. Other crows still picked up on their behavior, and their number still grew larger as more teeth would be deposited. It's been three months since Jeffrey brought the first tooth. I don't know where they find them, or how they can be so plentiful. I don't want to know, because wherever they're getting them from, it must be nearby. But what I do know is that I now have five pounds of human molars under my porch. Bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, bringing you true stories of the paranormal, supernatural, unsolved, and unexplained. Get the podcast at WeirdDarkness.com or search for Weird Darkness in your favorite podcast app. And a huge thanks to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights for inviting me to be a part of this episode. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. <laughs> <laughs>